Welcome to Future Bank Today, a community dedicated to driving innovation in our financial institutions. This is your host, Jim Kittredge, and today's episode is Blockchain, the Great Disruptor. Is the blockchain really going to change everything? Well, if there's a third party necessary to execute a transaction, the simple answer is yes. And just remember, as Bill Gates once said, we always overestimate the change that will occur in the next two years and underestimate the change that will occur in the next 10. I think it's an important quote to keep in mind throughout this discussion. In the last two years, more than $1 billion has been invested in blockchain. In fact, I wouldn't be shocked if we doubled that by year end. If you work in a financial institution of any kind or a technology company in the FI space, I suggest you listen to the rest of this video blog with a pen and paper because we're going to cover a lot of space in 10 minutes and I'm going to get specific on several topics and next steps. Well, in my last post, we discussed the very basics of blockchain. That's for the ease of understanding. I consciously left out what will enable all this change. And that is namely smart contracts. Because all the concepts of blockchain are software based, Specific instructions can be coded into any aspect of the system or any specific transaction. These smart contracts will reduce or eliminate costs by any intermediaries. And let's address this up front. A significant portion of revenues for any FI is their role as a trusted intermediary. Does this mean I think that blockchain will replace core banking products such as a basic checking account? While possible, it's not likely in the next decade. Yet the answer isn't so clear when we talk about everything else. Let's discuss it. So what will be disrupted over the next several years? Well, here's a list that I compiled for our discussion to consider. I'll just read them off. Real estate property titles, mortgages, mortgage securities, anyone who packages or repackages securities, loyalty and reward programs, medical records, custodial records, short-term structured finance, international letters of credit, online micropayments, stock exchanges, derivatives market, and finally, my favorite low-hanging fruit, concert and event tickets. I'll stop here because I can go on for a long time. However, I think you get the point. Anywhere there is need for a trusted third party to intermediate is ripe for disruption. So why is it so important for your company to be working in this space? Two reasons. The first, there have been a few easy calls on the next big thing in technology over the years. For example, the proliferation of PCs in the mid 80s, the internet in the mid 90s, mobile in the mid 2000s. Yet blockchain has the potential to rival all of their impact. In fact, some experts have gone on to say its impact will be even greater. And more importantly, while those technologies were more of a shift in customer interaction, neither really threatened the business models of most FIs. Blockchain, by its very essence, is a technology that actually eliminates certain roles in the value chain. And more importantly, because that core technology is open source, that is, it's free, it will be open to an entire list of competitors that don't even exist yet today as a threat. So where do you begin? Well, if I was in your shoes, here are the exact steps I would take. First, I would take an honest look at your existing business model and identify every revenue stream where you serve as a middleman, standing between two or more parties. This should give you a clear picture of what is ripe to be changed by blockchain. Next, I would suggest a tabletop exercise with someone who really understands blockchain to see what it would take to eliminate your current role in the value chain. You can also assume dozens of future competitors have already done the same for their market. Because let's face it, people didn't pour a billion dollars into this space for no reason. Next. Don't be one of those people who talk without a clue. Get yourself some Bitcoins, get yourself a wallet, make a small transaction. In other words, get some real experience. There are two good resources I suggest to start with. One is Coindesk.com. 
It's a great read. And two, if you don't read Reddit, this is a great opportunity to read the subreddit on blockchain and Bitcoin. Bottom line, learn as much as you can before you act. While there are several dozen companies and organizations in this space, I suggest you begin your focus with the two that have the most potential. The first is a company called R3. It's a well-funded consortium of FIs partnering together to develop an FI-specific solution. On the upside, they have amassed a terrific talent pool. I mean, world-class. On the downside, the sheer number of institutions involved has me and many others concerned. If history is an indicator, that will be its Achilles heel. The second is the Linux Foundation with its Hyperledger project, which is striving to build a cross-industry, open standard platform for blockchain. Think of it this way. They're trying to build an operating system of blockchain. My thoughts are, they have a high probability for success based on history. There are several FIs, R3 itself, and many major financial technology companies are also involved in that effort. Once you've done those steps, I recommend that you or your team begin to experiment in this space with one of two excellent platforms. The first is a crowdsourced platform called Ethereum, which is building a large global blockchain infrastructure. Heck, you can even learn a lot from them just by reviewing their current projects. The list is endless and incredibly creative. And even the source code itself can be found on the GitHub. The second platform is IBM's blockchain. Their platform called IBM Blue Mix Garages for blockchain has received excellent reviews. I think the only downside is you have to be able to withstand the marketing that's going to come with it. And finally, a few of the majors are already jumping in with trials and proof of concepts in the public sphere. RBC has partnered with Ripple on a cross-currency payments using blockchain technology. The NASDAQ actually has several projects out there, including a in-production proxy voting and a blockchain-based platform that manages the buying and selling of shares in private companies. Even Bank of America has a blockchain trial centered on trade finance, and there are many, many more. So what is the bottom line of all this? Well, despite all the hype, blockchain is very real, and it's coming sooner than most people think. And yes, it does. It has the potential to change everything a bank does. Thank you for your time today. And remember, next week, we're going to discuss the future of Bitcoin and other virtual currencies.